Good morning, everyone. Welcome to April 26th, 2020. It's hard to believe that we've been, for the last several weeks, closed in our sanctuaries across the world. The churches and everything else might be closed, but I want you to know this morning that heaven is wide open. That God's love is everywhere we want it to be. I want you to know this morning that the resurrection power is still prevalent in this world today. It's yours for the taking this morning. Shall we pray before we start this morning? Father, we thank you this morning for the resurrection power. It's widely available to everyone, O oh God, but so few Christians use it. We ask you this morning, Lord, to show up and let your people know the wonders we can do when we join hands and when we join forces with heaven. I ask you this morning, O oh Father, to bless people across the world that have lost loved ones due to this virus, O oh God. I ask you to be with those that are battling, O oh God, these viruses. I ask you this morning, O oh God, to bless homes and families. Lord, be with them, protect them, and let your blood cover them, Lord. I pray for wisdom, Lord, for our president. I pray that you'll guide Congress and the Senate and the Supreme Court, God. I also pray for our Governor Newsom, God, that you will just be with him and bless him and flood him with wisdom. We ask this morning that you will again show up and show your power to the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Possible through you, my eyes are open, my strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Come on, shout it out. Nothing is impossible. what I feel. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Cause deep down I know, deep down I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do anything. Cause through you, through you, I can do anything. Yes, I can do all things. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Come on, shout it. Nothing is impossible. Put your hands together. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll sing that again. I'm not going to live by what I see. I'm not going to live by what I see. Put those hands together. Let's believe nothing is impossible for our God this morning. 
No matter what we're going through, we're going to keep believing that. And our faith is going to increase right now as we sing, I believe. I believe, I believe. Shout it out. I believe, I believe in you. Because I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Come on, make it bigger. And I believe, I believe. Oh, yes. I believe, I believe in you. all things because it's you who gives me strength come on let's make it big nothing is impossible through you blind eyes are open my strongholds are broken i am living by faith and nothing is impossible because i believe i believe i believe i believe can you sing again i believe i believe
so let's just sing that chorus one more time and i will bring praise i will bring praise no weapon formed against me shall remain i will rejoice i will declare that god is my victory
worship the Lord with our own words and our own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
over and over. Your glory goes on. Your mercy goes on. Your faithfulness has no end. For you are the beginning and the end. Because your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Yes, I'm still in your hands. And this is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Yes, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. Never. Thank you guys for being here today. And as we continue our worship, we really want to just focus our attention right now to being thankful for God as we're getting ready to take our offering. And you know what? Even though the trials and what we're going through, it could seem pretty tough right now. But you know what? You could still be thankful. You can be thankful that God gives us the little things in life. He gives us the big things. He kept our heart beating during the night. He gave us air to breathe, woke us up this morning. So no matter what you're going through, you can be thankful today. And we're going to continue our worship and we're going to continue that through our giving right now. So please make sure that you continue your faithfulness and giving. You can give online, ICCLife.com. Make sure you go to that and you can click the tab for giving. And it will walk you right through what to do. You can also give through the Share Faith app. And if you, app, and if you still have some questions or you don't know how to give on that, like someone maybe just to talk to you, walk you through that, you can call 916 670 one nine one three that's our church number we'd love to talk to you kind of help you through that so let's just pray together as a family wherever you're sitting right now and doing that i just ask that you just make this a time of worship between you and god and the giving because we still need to make sure that that, that the bills and the utilities and the things that happen here even though we're not meeting still running every week so let's just pray together god thank you so much for being faithful thank you for for providing for all of our needs god no matter what we're going through you are there lord we love you and as the people are giving right now god i pray that you will bless their home lord that you will continue to pour out your blessings and your protection over them we thank you father for all the people that call icc home and that are faithful week after week in giving to support the the ongoing ministries here at our church lord and let this be our worship to you and excitement to do that today it's in your name we pray amen god bless you thank you for giving this morning this morning my message was on the god of the impossibles the bible has 66 books 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament, all written by 40 different authors over a period of 1,500 years. These authors lived in different places and different times, and each one of them living with different cultures. They had many different occupations and lifestyles, but the focus of what they have written is the same to reveal God's heart and His will for mankind. The Bible is a book of hope and inspiration to all who read it. It is filled with powerful promises that takes us to the heights in our lives that are incomprehensible to others, unattainable with man's power, but supernatural with God's power. We call them miracles something that cannot be done by man 
alone. It takes us to destinations far beyond our wildest expectations. The Bible is filled with people that lived and saw all these hopes come to pass. It drove Moses to go to one of the most powerful men in Egypt, Pharaoh, and say, let my people go. It drove Joshua to say loud and clear to the people, let us inhabit the land that God has given to us. That hope caused King David to build a temple for God in Jerusalem. He loved God so much, he worshipped God, and he wanted to build a place for God. Years later, the prophet Nehemiah would rebuild the temple after the city was reduced to rubble. All it takes is one person to realize that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even before we were in our mother's womb, God knew us and had a plan for us. God had a future. God had a dream. God had a blueprint for our lives. The destination that God has for you might seem unimaginable, but you will see it fulfilled with that resurrection power. Why does God fill us with hope? To see our dreams fulfilled. God gives us hope. Without hope, a person dies. You could live without water. You could live without food for a longer time than hope. Hope can kill people in hours, knowing that you're, you, that you're going to die or giving up and quitting is losing hope. And that's what God gives us through the Bible as we read it. Hope that whatever we're going through is this too shall pass. God wants us to be able to say there is more and more and more for people that love Him, that worship Him, and that follow Him. We must not build our lives on selfish reasons. Our lives should revolve and be built on the foundation and the word of Jesus Christ. And while you're building God's kingdom on earth, I want to assure you, His glory will be poured out upon you. His blessings will fill you. And you will have blessings and rewards here on earth and for eternity. There is more godly authority for us to take a hold of. There is more healing to bring to the broken. More hopeless people to be saved. More shattered families to be restored. More people living in poverty to be lifted up. We can see God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That's what was the Lord's prayer. That Jesus said, Lord, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. And you can have that kind of life today. Never reduce God's greatness to moderation, routine, or the ordinary, or the mundane. Let your dreams run wild and build the foundation upon the rock of Jesus Christ. President John F. Kennedy dreamed of having a human being on the, on the moon in the 60s. Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed of one day where all God's children would be one and we would celebrate each other's color and race. How much more can God do through each one of us if we allow Him to? The Bible has been reduced to a mere fairy tale book. The miracles of the Bible seem not to be relevant today at all. The word of God has been watered down to religiousness and a list of do's and don'ts. The Bible, let me tell you, is the power for daily life. If we obey God's words, blessings and reward follow us all the days of our lives. The prophet Isaiah 
in chapter 58 says godly people dream great things not just for themselves but also for others for those wrongly imprisoned we work to free them for those that have chains we work to free them for those that are hungry we work to feed them for those that are homeless we work to shelter them for those that have no clothes or very few clothes or tattered clothes we work to give them those needs we are placed upon this planet to fill the needs of others more importantly than ourselves God is calling for your faith to be breathing flames of fire defeating demons that plague people giving people hope and encouragement conquering all forms of evil and spreading the love of God far and wide he has destinations for us that you cannot even begin to imagine or dream yes without God dreams are impossible but we serve a God of impossibilities are you living the abundant life that Jesus promised in John chapter 10 and verse 10 Jesus says I've come that you may have life and that you may have an abundant life in Psalm chapter 20 and verse 4 David says may he grant you your hearts desires and fulfill all your plans if you know how to give your kids good things how much more does God want to bless you fulfill your dreams your goals and ambitions and give to you more than what your parents want to give you think about that for a minute wake up every morning knowing that you have a great future and no matter what that day brings to you your future is secure in God's hands we all have plans and God wants to fulfill them you know you and I we plan for birthdays for anniversaries especially the Valentine's Day you know we want to make our spouse feel special we plan for it we surprise them I believe in with all my heart God wants to he's planning stuff for you and for me for greatness I believe that God has surprises along the way for us I have witnessed God's surprises in my life time and time again and I don't deserve it but I want you to know this morning that you serve a great big God passions and dreams are not flesh centered if God is in them too many times I hear people say oh that's a selfish reason no God wants to bless us to bless others I want you to know that this morning where there is no vision the people gradually die too many people are already dead they're just buried years later if a tiny virus can do such damage to the whole world just think what a mustard size faith can do to the world if you look at a mustard seed it is probably the smallest seed in the world and yet Jesus says if you have faith of a mustard seed you can move mountains and he meant it you can conquer the evil in this world you can go after your dreams and goals and ambitions and aspirations because you've got God cheering you on you have the angels in heaven that are standing in the arena of your life mot motivating you and moving you on to your dreams and goals Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20 truly I tell you if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed you can say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move nothing will be impossible for you you must have passion and discipline in your life to go where no one has gone before procrastination is the thief of our dreams and goals and ambitions think of things you wanted to get done 
and it's been year, years now, and they're still not done. Gym people are so disciplined. That is why they look the way they do. You need discipline in your life. I always say they have muscles in places. I don't have places. Those are the people that go to the gym. It's a regiment. It's a discipline. And they do it faithfully. That should be our walk with God. It'll show when we have discipline for God and the Word of God. You can see God's glory in your life and see the real results. Like Hebrews chapter 11 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. A living faith brings life-giving results. God has promised to take us to new heights unimaginable. You will never climb Mount Everest if you don't begin to climb at the base. Jesus wants us to accomplish greatness in our lives. You can do it and Jesus will help. You want greatness? Jesus says two words serve others you want greatness be humble and kind you want greatness take care of the needs of others around you in my travels around the world I have met many godly leaders and pastors that have touched my own life great churches one that impressed me the most was meeting a pastor from Africa in the heart of Ukraine, Kiev, Ukraine. A black man in a white country. God brought him out of Nigeria to Ukraine. He started a church in 1993 with seven people. Pastor Sunday, I was privileged to go into his office and meet with him and chat with him. Today, that's the largest church in Europe. You see, God wants to fulfill our dreams and goals and aspirations and to make us great for His kingdom and for His glory and for His sake. I love it when I go across to other churches in the world and I see what God has done and I see pastors reaching out to their communities and serving the lost and giving hope to people. I want you to spend your energies towards a God-given dream. Are you, have you stopped dreaming? Can you begin to dream again no matter what's happened in your life? No matter with the divorce, no matter with family separations, no matter with hiccups along the way and hang-ups? I want you to dream again this morning. I don't want you to let what your past has done to you, the scars that have, have, have marred your body, I want you to this morning to start to dream again. And say, God, I'm going to dream again. I'm going to dream great things for you, O oh God. This morning, I'm privileged and honored to have one of our own saints in our church, Steve Harrison, come to share the story of how his world seemed to fall apart. But he didn't quit or give up. But instead, he believed God. He trusted God. And that God would bring him through those trials, through those storms, through those hiccups, through those hang-ups, and allow him to dream again. A couple of years ago now, um, my world came to a, a, a pretty big crash. And, and that's, you know, it wasn't just my world, it was my, my family's world, my, my, kids, my kids' world as well there was a lot of changes that uh that had been going on leading up to to what had happened two years ago and that's that that uh i ended up in a divorce and never anticipated seeing myself in that uh in that role or in that um in that storm two years ago but it happened and I will tell you right now that there is one thing that I that I know is true that God says that I hate divorce. 
And I truly believe that the reason God said that in, in Scripture is, is because of what it does to people uh, emotionally. It's very, um, it's, it's a very emotional um, situation to be in. For those of you that have been in it, you, you understand where I'm coming from. And those that have not been in it, I advise you, at all costs, do not go into it. It's not, it's not an easy way out, despite what people will say. But uh, I understand that, that um, even though that God did not want that to happen, it did happen. But through it, I know that God was with me, and He allowed me to gain more understanding about his goodness through it and and what had happened through it um one area that um i had established long before this divorce had happened was the in the area of tithing and i believe that um that allowed me to trust god in a, in a deeper sense, because if I could trust God with my finances, I could trust Him with anything. And um, I don't believe that had I had that foundation even laid, that it would have gone the way it had. Um, I will say that... Um, there were times that it was challenging to do so with the with the mounting cost of divorce. As you know, attorneys are not cheap. But um, through everything that happened in that, I saw God's faithfulness in my in my finances. Even even uh, after almost a year after it, the the divorce came to a complete uh, completion, and my I was able to come out of that debt-free. And I don't know how else that could have happened, but by the grace of God. Um, in the process, there were, <laughs> there were other challenges as well. I had to sell my house. But God, again, blessed me through that. It wasn't an easy way or an easy time to get to that um, to that new house it took five months to, to go to through escrow because of hang-ups and I and I believe that 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 was an attack from the enemy as well I don't understand the reasoning behind it I don't know why it happened but it did happen and all I can say now is that I'm thankful that I was able to get through it with God's help. It wasn't easy. Um, I had um, I had a lot of help uh, along the way uh, emotionally. About a year ago, now um, we had prayed um, for for God to bring somebody into my life, which I can't believe how fast He answered that one. I mean, it was it was a course of two weeks, and again, what she was going through and what I was going through, it's it was completely God's. We were on the same path, heading right towards each other, and we didn't even realize it. God is faithful. God is good. And fairly recently, there was um, there's a song that uh, is by Bethel Music. It's, uh, it's called I Raise a Hallelujah. And in, that, in those lyrics, and I'm not going to sing them because I'm going to leave them to Brittany to sing them because it, the minute I get up and sing them, that'll be our last Sunday here. We'll close up the doors and lock them and nobody will want to come back in. But in the chorus it says, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. And uh, 
down towards the end of the down the end of the song it says sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies you know, so I, I really truly believe that our enemies cannot stand against us when we're standing and praising God our enemies will flee our enemies satan trembles at the name of Jesus he knows his destiny he knows what his fate is and I know how his story ends. I don't know how my story ends exactly. I still have many years to go, I hope. But during this, this storm right now that we're in with this uh, coronavirus, I know that God knew exactly in 2020 that this was going to happen. This did not catch God off guard at all. He will prevail through this and through this storm we need to sing a little louder because God will prevail as our faith increases so do the results that God brings Jesus does not tell us to aspire to greatness he shows us from his word and speaks to us along the way we are never left alone, although at times we might feel like it. I do. Many times I feel alone, but I know I'm not alone because God is with me. All you need to do is to trust and obey. I love that hymn growing up in Calcutta. My pastor Mark Buntain would always lead us in that hymn. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. My story begins in Calcutta as a poor kid growing up there. I had goals, I had dreams, but I can tell you now they would never have come to fruition if God was not involved in it. As a teenager in Calcutta, I put my hopes and dreams and ambitions at the altar table before God. I want you to know this morning that part of it was seeing every country in this world and seeing all seven continents. God has brought that and more to me. I can proudly say to the glory of God that I was able to go to Asia, to Europe, to Australia, to South America, North America, Africa, and an uninhabitable continent, Antarctica. All you see there are icebergs and whales and penguins. But with God's help, I was able to go to all seven continents. That's the God we serve this morning. Here's a poor kid in Calcutta not knowing where my next meal was coming from, and I'm challenging and telling God for the impossible in my own heart and life. I want you to know this morning God is so real. God really wants to talk to us. God wants to make our goals and dreams come true. God wants to partner with us to excellence and greatness in our lives. But we've got to do our part in surrendering to Him. You see a man in the Bible by the name of Joseph was given dreams by God. Even his brothers called him a dreamer. I love that. I wish people called me a dreamer. I want to dream big things for God. But that dreamer never lost sight of his dreams. He, his brothers threw him into a pit. While he was with Potiphar, Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with him. He ran away because he couldn't compromise his values for God. He got thrown into prison for something he didn't do wrong. But eventually, God took him from the pit to the prison and to the palace because he was faithful to God. It might have been 13 years from the day he was in the pit to the day he entered the palace, but he was faithful to God. All along the way, he trusted God. And he says, God, I've partnered with you. I've dreamed these things. And God allowed him not only to be the second most powerful person on the planet, 
but able to save the Israelites from the famine. From 70 people that was originally saved by, from, by Joseph being there with his own family too, they grew to 2 million people. That's when Moses comes on the scene and tells Pharaoh, let my people go. You see, God has a plan for peoples, for families, for homes. But we've got to stay the course. It's hard. Sometimes we have family members who don't look at things the same way we do. It's hard when people around us don't see things the way we do. But we've got to stay the course. We've got to keep on our faithfulness journey to God to see evidence of that blessing and the results in our life. Yes, you will have problems along the way. Who does not have problems? Yes, you will go through the valleys of our lives. Yes, you will have crisis. Yes, you will have storms. But God has promised always to be with us. Trust me when I say that. I've been so many times, I should be dead by now. So many times in a car accident. I remember many years ago when I was in London and with my uncle who just died a few days ago. We were in London in a car and we got T-boned. We walked out of the car with not even a bruise on our body. And I can go on and give you many more incidents. Well, I should be dead. All of hell tried to snuff out the flame in this heart and life. And God says, Welters is going nowhere. I have a plan and I have a destiny for his life. And I'm going to bring it to fruition. No demon in hell, not even Satan himself, can thwart the plan of God in our lives. You are highly favored and valued by the God that I serve this morning. Joseph was a dreamer and he dreamed. And I love the four P's that I've, I, I, I learned from this story. His discipline put him in prison. He would not compromise even when the wife of Potiphar wanted to sleep with him. His determination put him in the palace. Stay faithful and trust God. He's got your back. His death put him in paradise. Yes, his name was written in the Lamb's book of life because he stayed the course, he was faithful to God, and God in return was faithful to him and protected him. This life that we live is too short. We are here for a few years. Where will you spend eternity? Have you ever thought about that? There is a real hell and a real heaven. God created hell for Satan and his demons, not for mankind. God wants you to live with him in heaven. He wants you to know him. He wants you to walk with him. And he wants you to aspire to greatness in your life. I want you to know this morning that you can begin to dream again. I want you to know this morning that God has a plan for you. Even King David, who was anointed as a teenager to be the next king of Israel, had to sleep in caves, sometimes had no food to eat, ran around like a vagabond, a maverick, and a wild man. But he trusted God. And eventually, being a shepherd boy, he ended up being the second king of Israel. I want you to know this morning when others look at you and they see a shepherd boy and they see a nobody and they see somebody who's going nowhere, God sees a king in you. God sees a queen in you. And God wants you to aspire to greatness. Doesn't matter your economic circumstances. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. Doesn't matter where you were born or raised. Doesn't matter your past. I want you to know this morning, God has great dreams for you and God will fulfill those dreams for you. Just stay the course. Just run the course like Paul says to the finish line. Too many times we have these detours in our lives. They take us away from God's plan. 
I've been on those detours myself. But I learned to come back quickly because I knew where I was protected by the grace of God. I knew I had to stay the course if God wanted to work in my own heart and life. And I'm so thankful to God today for where I am in my own life, in my own heart. I'm so thankful that He loved me even in, irrespective of my past, irrespective of my failures, irrespective of everything that I've put Him through. There were times that I saddened the heart of God with the sins of my own past life. But I'm so grateful this morning to let you know that God wants you to dream again. God wants to do what He did in the Bible for Joseph, for David, for Esther, for Deborah. God wants you to know this morning He has great plans for you. Don't let anybody rob you of those dreams, those goals and those plans. I want you to begin to write them down in a journal and say, God, I'm going to start to dream big things for you. I'm going to decide this morning, oh God, that with the resurrection power, I know I can go to new heights, to great heights, and I can climb Mount Everest. I know I can do it. Growing, going to uh, school in uh, Darjeeling, I woke up every morning to see the beautiful mountains, the base camp of Mount Everest. Gorgeous. In fact, if the sun arose that day, we had a sunshine holiday. That's how few days of sun, sunshine we saw. It was always cloudy and overcast. And I remember waiting for the sun to shine. Some of the days never did. But we would get a sunshine holiday. We knew we didn't have to show up for class. And I'm always reminded of that in my own life, the days of cloudiness, of overcast, but the sun will shine again. I want you to know that this morning we serve a God that loves us. We serve a God that motivates us. We serve a God that wants to give us more and more and more. It hurt, it hurt my heart this week when my uncle, my dad's brother, passed away. And I couldn't help but think of people that poured into my life. One was my uncle Alfred and his wife Pat. The other was my aunt Valerie and her husband Derek. And there was a Jewish couple I came to know through a friend of mine when I lived in London who just reached out to me and blessed me. Sanu and Hazel Isaacs, they both gone on. But just great people that poured into my heart and life. I am who I am today because God brought them into my life and God blessed me through them. God blesses you through people. They are people God has put in your life to help you get to where you need to go. Appreciate them, love them, and let them know how much you have appreciated them. I'm thankful the first time I remember I got married to my wife. We went back to England and we saw this Jewish couple, friends of mine, and they wanted to bless Carol too, and they just took her out to a jewelry store and bought her stuff. Just people that love and give. We got to learn to be givers if you want to climb to great heights with Jesus Christ. And so I'm so reminded of people in my own heart and life that have got me to where I am today. I couldn't do it by my own. And thank God for placing people in your life, in my life, that have helped us get to where we are today. Always appreciate others in your life. Always appreciate them because God has put them in your life. You might not realize it, you might not understand it, but God has put them there for a reason and a purpose. And so I want you this morning to dream again because we serve the God of impossibilities. Let us pray together as we close this morning. Father, we just thank you this morning, God, that you are great and you are greatly to be praised. I thank you, O oh God, this morning. If it wasn't for your grace and love and mercy, I wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing, O oh God. And I wouldn't have the passion to do what I do, Lord. But God, you've stirred my heart. I have a passion and a hunger to serve you, no matter what, O oh God. Because I love you and what you've done for me, O oh God. 
I ask you, God, this morning to put reminders in people's minds, O oh God, of people that have blessed them and been with them through life's journeys. I ask you, O oh God, to remind them to appreciate them because you've placed them in our lives for such a time as this. I pray for people all across, O oh God, right now that they will begin to dream again, O oh God, because we have that resurrection power in us. Father, this morning I'm just asking you, Lord, to show up and show off your greatness and your glory. Bless your people, bless families out there, O oh God, and I pray this morning they will realize there is a God, there is a Savior that loves them. There is a God, there is a Savior that motivates them and that moves them on into greatness for your glory. We thank you for this morning, O oh God, and we just commit everything to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I just want to close with this blessing for each and every one of you. It's taken from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen and amen. Thank you.